I am so excited that Klonoa is finally in Smash Brothers, as unlikely as it seemed. This is the part where I do have to tell you that this is a joke, and so far that isn't true. Once in a video I deadpanned that Alfred Hitchcock created Star Wars, and to this day, people correct me on it. So a little context on this project. I am primarily a 2D and 3D artist and character designer who has been wanting for a long time to start creating my own figures, toys, statues of characters of my own, and have finally started the journey to make that happen. For the uninitiated on both Amiibos and Klonoa, Amiibo are a delightful new creation from Nintendo that blends both toy and game alike. If plugged into the right games, Amiibos can unlock new modes, characters, and features. For the game Super Smash Brothers, which brings together uh, game characters from all through gaming history, from all kinds of different franchises, if a character is added to the roster, they are guaranteed to get their own Amiibo figure. And I really love these well-made and detailed figures that all come together in a unified series. I really like having these physical versions of characters, and these days Klonoa really doesn't have any merchandise out there. I only ever tend to see this ridiculously bootlegged plush pop up on Etsy and eBay. So Klonoa is a small series of games that started out on the PS1. There's a sequel on the PS2 called uh, Klonoa 2 Lunatea's Veil, vale. a few Game Boy Advance games, Moonlight Museum on the Wonderswan, which has probably my favorite standalone art of any Klonoa, and there's even a beach volleyball game. None of the games have ever really sold that well, and Klonoa's incredibly unlikely inclusion in Smash Brothers would only be helped by the fact that Namco Bandai, the company that makes Klonoa, has assisted on development of Smash Brothers in the past. Klonoa is hands down one of my favorite character designs, and I just love this really offbeat and obscure game series, which all started with Klonoa, Door to Phantom Isle. Klonoa is not any particular kind of animal, some like to call him a cabot. Uh, what he is known as, though, is as Klonoa of the Wind, thanks to his wind ring and as a dream traveler. And I'm hoping that I can help some of you gain an appreciation of this series through this video. If you love Kirby, for example, which I know some of you do, where Kirby adopts the dreamlike aesthetic for its worlds, like Dreamland, Klonoa often feels like you're actually in a dream. Uh, lots of fans like to talk about just how surprisingly sad Klonoa is, which is true, but I like to note just how it actually makes you feel like Spider-Man, sorry, it makes you feel like you're in a dream. A combination of the low-resolution 2.5D models and sprites, the language that's spoken, it makes you sort of wonder, like, is this just a bizarre thing for kids? Is it supposed to be an unsettling carnival? It effectively distorts your senses as an aesthetic, and there's something I appreciate about the original game so much. There's a Wii remake that's decent, but just look at the very literally modeled characters and added voice acting in the remake. The beast lives in the legendary Moon Kingdom. Ha. I'm building this tower so I can get there and visit. You really think it'll reach the Moon Kingdom? And then that same scene in the original is just a whole different vibe. <laughs> My buddies Artsy Omni over on Curiomatic and Jacob Overk have both made really cool versions of Klonoa from later entries in the series, and I might try again in the future to make a Player 2, a Klonoa 2 amiibo if folks are interested in seeing that, but for now I'm going to focus on the Klonoa Door to Phantom Isle design. So my goal is to digitally sculpt, uh, resin 3D print, and then paint a Klonoa amiibo figure, learning how to do the majority of those things for the first time, uh, and all done in a week, because YouTube's algorithm is incredibly unforgiving. Did I succeed? Well, I'll have you know that this is not just another one of those tried making it, had a breakdown, bon appetit situations. I didn't have a breakdown. I, I had three. First, I started off with this wireframe sketch of Klonoa that I'd done to demonstrate construction to high school kids back when I taught art there. And when I tell you that these kids appreciated a breakdown of an obscure game character they'd never heard of, I am not telling the truth. There are a few references to pull from on Klonoa's original design, but since most of it is 2D, or incredibly low resolution, as I begin sculpting in ZBrush, I am mostly figuring things out as I go for what feels good. I arrive at a neutrally posed version of Klonoa that I can export to Chitubox for a test, which preps the file for printing on the frozen Mighty 4K Resin 3D printer, and for folks who aren't interested in 3D printing, that was just a bunch of words. 
I will note, for kids at home, don't, don't breathe, breathe this. this. UV curing resin is a skin irritant and not something you'd ever want to ingest, so make sure you always use gloves and make sure to cure and wash your prints properly. What this is doing here is flashing one layer of resin at a time with ultraviolet light, which hardens it to the base, which rises up as the print progresses. These prints can easily take three to eight, even longer hours, depending on your settings, so that the model stays on the build plate, little tiny supports are added, which can be taken off just like the sprues of a model kit, like a Gundam. This test model came out really nice, except for a few areas that weren't supported well enough that shifted during the print. This, however, is not an amiibo. This is only the beginning. So now begins the dark middle chapter of our quest. I went back into ZBrush and modeled Klonoa's Windring, his companion and best friend who nothing bad ever happens to, don't spoil it for everyone else, Hupo, and a support for them to be attached to. So here's the thing about Amiibo. The majority of them are accompanied by these clear pegs and supports so that the figures can be in wild poses while adhered to the base. Even Isabel is in an absolutely bonkers stride. What is she doing here, walking? So even she has this little acrylic support. So what I did was specifically buy clear UV resin that the figure could be attached to. So sometimes the resin cures a little more yellow than clear, but that's fine because it's also consistent with early Amiibo figures. I should point out here the key difference between my home office best efforts to generate an Amiibo and what's available from a giant production company who can mass produce a real version of an Amiibo. For a real production Amiibo, most individual colors are injection molded, meaning that something that's meant to be red, like Kazooie, comes out red. These pieces are then put together and any additional detail, like Kazooie's wings or the printing on Banjo for the backpack is then painted on with a tampo method, which uses a rubber blotter to adhere paint and images and graphics to curved surfaces. Now what I'm set up with here though is single color resin prints. To try and get closer to the actual Amiibo though, I have purchased an entire airbrushing kit and I'm parting out all the pieces of Klonoa to be painted individually. Nothing can possibly go wrong. <laughs> I am creating one digital graphic for the model, that of Hupo's face. For this, I created his face in Photoshop and printed it out on water slide decal paper. For the base of the Amiibo, someone already made a model which I was able to download, and I scaled it to the exact size of the other Amiibos. I printed these bases along with the clear stand, and hey, it's time for a UV curing break. At this point, it's the Friday morning before this Sunday release. I am learning to do basically everything since we got out of the computer for the first time, and it is a lot of trial and error. We now have all of the small pieces of Klonoa printed, and one thing I'm noticing is just how small everything is. I wanted to be able to paint his face details white apart from the black head, but this face piece is just too small. I reprint the head along with the collar and try my best to airbrush and connect these pieces together, all while using the limits of my very fine motor skills to work on this incredibly small model. Very tough. I set the printer to work on a larger version as a backup, spend the majority of the day painting, and hit an absolute wall. So as a bit of transparency and honesty, this is the part where I wanted to say just how badly I wanted to come into this project, completely ace it in the first try, and then confidently release a video. After all, the way that things are on the internet, perfectionism is almost demanded. I can't fail or come up short in a video because inevitably someone will skip all the way through the video, ignore the context and the first tries and 80 hours of work, and either dismiss, make fun of, nitpick, or straight up harass over not getting something exactly right. So late on Friday, I was losing hope. I was severely disappointed in the way that this was turning out. It was too small. The pieces were not coming together. My amateur painting skills were not producing anything that anyone could mistake for a real amiibo. So for all intents and purposes, I had failed. But what did we just talk about in last week's video? Iteration. 
you pick yourself back up and you try again because failure is the only way that anything ever got done. Remember that larger print that I started earlier in the day Friday? I'm so happy I did because it turned out nearly perfect. Immediately though, I did have to shed a few things. This could not be airbrushed. It would unfortunately need to be hand painted because it's all one solid object. I only also have one tiny paintbrush. Also, sorry to the clear resin, but our stand is just going to need to be white for now. I started with white primer this time so that my light colors wouldn't get grayed out. I worked from my lightest color toward my darkest color the way that airbrushes like to be done. The paint job is not perfect because mini painting is not where I come from and I was literally using airbrush paints with a brush. There are parts that are globby and uneven, but you know what? In the end, I think I made a Klonoa Amiibo. So I have learned almost nonstop this week. I would love to do more like this in the future. A revisit and perfect Klonoa, try to make amiibos of other hopeless Smash characters, and continue to get better at producing figures of my own characters. So this isn't even a side quest, because this is something I'm really interested in getting better at, and I think that once I get more comfortable with that hand painting, this should be pretty interesting. So I'd say for now, quest complete. Thank you for watching this. I make new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. Subscribing lets you know when new videos are made available. I also offer something called Biko's Backpack, where a new original trading card and hard enamel pin arrive in your mailbox every month. You can grab that on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. For now, it's 2D merch. In the future, who knows? If you're interested in a Klonoa of your own, uh, they're not available. They're, they're not, they're not, of, they're not, of, they're not available. Hey, D DM me if, yeah, maybe we can work something out. My course learn character design is a comprehensive character design curriculum. It's over 18 hours of video learning. You can get it at learncharacterdesign.com and you can follow me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.